So this session is dedicated for CSS, combat service support, and training. To head and to chair this uh, meeting, we have at the head of the panel, Major General Melinda Pires, who is the, who is the Vice Chancellor of the, defense, uh, of the General Sir John Kotalawala Defense University. Major General Pires is an armed officer with over 30 years of service and is a graduate of the National Defense College, New Delhi, and Command and Staff College, Bangladesh, as well as Armour School, Fort Knox, Kentucky, USA. He has had higher military training in both Pakistan and India as well. Major General Pires has held men all command, staff, and instru instructional appointments that are commensurate with his rank and service. He was also the Director General of Research and Development at the Ministry of Defense prior to the present appointment. Over and above his present responsibilities as the Vice Chancellor of the Defense University, he also provides leadership as the Colonel of the Regiment of the Mechanized Infantry Regiment. General Piris is a recipient of Rana Vikrama Padakkama and Rana Sura Padakkama awarded for conspicuous gallantry in battle. He is also a recipient of Uttama Seva Padakkama for his unblemished military career in the army and a recipient of the Legion of Merit which is a military decoration of the United States Armed Forces awarded for exceptional and meritorious conduct. With that brief introduction, I will now hand over the floor to Major General Melinda Pires for further proceedings. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Ruan. Commander of the Army, former commanders of the Army, senior officers of tri-services, defense attaches and foreign delegates, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Having heard two interesting sessions on how the Sri Lankan Army contributed towards humanitarian operations and also about the force multipliers that effectively contributed towards defeating the LTT, now it is the time to analyze another two more important contributory aspects that is, that contributed to us defeating LTT. That is none other than the combat service support, that is CSS and training involved in the process. As we all know, combat service support plays a vital and a pivotal role in any form of battle. In fact, many experts say if the logistic supplies, supplies are 100%, then you have won the war by 50%. With that, it determines that no army can win a war without an effective chain of logistic supplies. History also indicates that some military campaigns have failed due to ineffective logistic supplies. In fact, same happened to LTT also, when their chain of logistic supplies were disrupted by the Sri Lankan Navy at sea and also the army disrupted their logistic supplies on ground. It is prudent to know how the Sri Lankan army has defeated LTT with the availability of meager resources compared to most of the armies in the world. The teeth to tail ratio, in other words, the ratio of forces in teeth arms and logistic forces were unmatchable. Generally, an infantry division is allocated with a battalion of ordnance, EME, SNT, etc. However, in Sri Lanka, there was no classic allotment due to shortage of logistic troops and resources. Then how did they achieve this unique achievement? Especially in high-intensity, fast-moving scenario. To support northern operations, there was no main supply route, MSR, linking the north and south. Troops and logistic supplies were sent through only by means of air and sea transportation until the A9 route was established. 
handling of large number of internally displaced persons, IDPs. How did they support? All these issues together, provision of logistics became a nightmare. If so, what changes they did? Were they, were they pragmatic to apply unique concepts, innovative approaches, and most importantly, how did they breach the gap? So to talk about all these concepts and methods that they used, we are fortunate to have some experts in the field of logistics as well as training. And those who have effectively and efficiently carried out their tour of duty during the period of humanitarian operations. I consider it's a great privilege and honor to chair this session and also to introduce these great personalities. Initially, Brigadier Dhammika Karyavasam and uh, Brigadier Tissa Jayasurya will address you. Brigadier Dhammika Karyavasam, USP LSC, was enlisted to the Sri Lanka Army as an officer cadet on 25th, 27th April 1983. During his unblemished and illustrious military career in the Army, he has held many key appointments and staff appointments, command and staff appointments. Amongst them, a few considerable appointments are Colonel AQ-52 Division, Colonel AQ at uh, Defense Services Command and Staff College, Center Commandant of his own regiment, that is Sri Lanka Army Service Corps, Brigadier AQ, Security Forces Headquarters 1E, and his present appointment is Director Army Quartering at Army Headquarters. Brigadier Dhammi Karyasam has followed many local and overseas training courses during his military career. During the humanitarian operations, Brigadier Dhammi Karyasam held his key appointment as the Brigadier AQ of the Security Forces 1E and he served under the present commander of the army when he was the commander SF-1 That itself is a testimony to prove his caliber. For his illustrious military career, he has, he has received many medals, including Uttama Seva Padakkam. Over to you, Damik. Thank you, sir. Then also about Brig Brigadier Tissa Jai Surya was commissioned in the Corps of IMI on 14 January 1984. He is presently serving as the Director of Electrical and Mechanical Engineering at the Army Headquarters. During his military career, he has gained a wealth of knowledge and experience by attending large number of local and overseas courses. Brigadier Jayasuri, during his military career, has served in most of the operational areas 